All right, good morning everyone. Um, today we are looking at the listening test. The listening test is the aspect of the IELTS test that assesses your ability to listen to a native English speaker and provide information based on what you are able to hear. The listening test has um, 40 questions that you are to answer. And each question carries one mark. And the listening test lasts for 40 minutes. And of course, there are four sections. So when you are listening, you are expected to do three things at the same time. You are meant to read, you are expected to listen, and of course, you have to write. So these three things you are meant to do when you are having your listening test. If you fail to do any of these guys, you will definitely miss answers. So how does it work? First, you read instructions, read the questions, then wait for the audio to begin. When the audio begins, while you are listening to the audio, you are also meant to be reading alongside. So while you are reading and you are listening to the audio, when you hear your answer, you must write. So but if you fail to do any of these, certainly you will miss some answers. Okay. Now, in listening tests, you are expected to show 101% concentration in this next test. Do not allow anything to bother your mind as such that you begin to think about it or you drift away in thought. If you do that, before you return back to join the listening test, some answers or important information may have passed you by. And the risk of not concentrating is when you realize that you've missed certain answers, you would want to actually think of what can be used to fill in those areas. And unconsciously, you might lose concentration again to think of what to write. And when you are thinking of what to write, the audio keeps playing. And while that audio is playing, your mind is elsewhere trying to think of what is best to fill in those areas you've missed. And while you're doing that, you are missing more answers or information. So, the listening test requires you to show off 101% concentration. Please, you don't have an option than to give this whole concentration. Now, the listening test. When you are carrying out your listening test, as a non-native English speaker, you are meant to have some, or you are meant to face or encounter certain things. Some of those things would be the pace of the audio or speaker. This has to do with how fast or slow it is. Then you are looking at um, the accent of the speaker. You are looking at the pronunciation of the speaker or the audio. And you are also looking at the enunciation. Now, when you are not a native English speaker, you are going to have some little challenge or challenges uh, taking care of these four areas. First, it is often um, talked about or complained by a lot of test takers that whenever it is a female voice, they find it slightly difficult to handle. Because of the clarity of the voice, because of the level of accent of the voice or the person or the speaker, because of the pace of the speaker, and of course, 
the pronunciation and enunciation. So what happens? What do you do? You need to focus on the information that you have on your question paper. You need to read ahead. Then pay the 101% attention and concentration. So when you do that, no matter how bad it feels, battling with the female voice, you would be able to still catch up with the area she is treating. Right? So this will help you. Now let's understand what these different areas simply mean. Pace. Pace has to do with how fast or how slow the audio is playing. How fast or how slow the speaker is actually talking. So when the pace is slow, it is easier for a non-native English speaker to manage. But when it's fast, it becomes a little bit of a challenge for a non-native English speaker to handle. So this will require you to practice very hard, very well, very wide to meet up with all of these, um, with the pace. Because the more you practice, the better you get with catching up with the pace. Right? Then, people who are engrossed in foreign films or movies or foreign documentaries, those who do so much of Netflix, those who do a lot of cartoons, they don't have so much, um, a lot of challenge when it comes to pace because they are already used to it. They already have mastered the skill of actually following up with the pace of the speaker when they are going through their movies or when they are listening to their um, music or songs and all that. But people or uh, test takers who are non-native English speakers who dwell solely and strictly on their native home movies and content, they are primarily into that. So they find it a little bit of a challenge to manage with the foreign or the original or native English speaker. Now let's look at accent. Accent is a natural thing for a native English speaker. It's not something they try to just fabricate. It is something that is inborn. It is something that, sh that they experience or that they just that people just get to experience when they are talking. They don't even know that such accent exists because it is something they do by default. So, for a non-native English speaker, there is a little bit of a hassle to actually catch up with the accent of a, a native English speaker. You get to hear, hi, how are you doing today? I don't understand what you're saying and all that, and blah, 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 blah. That's the accent. They don't do it just because they are enjoying it, it is default. It is just their own way, right? So, you, the best way to manage and overcome this particular um, quality of a native speaker is practicing over time. Having a lot of practices, engaging in so, a lot of practices. So that will help you to also get used to their accent. Listening to the news, watching their native movies, not the um, translated movies, they are real native movies, right? The movies without subtitles. That's what you have to watch because if you go for movies that have subtitles, most times concentration would always be on reading what is written so you would catch up. But if you go for movies that do not have subtitles, you will be able to manage and build or improve on your listening skills, especially understanding their, or getting used to their accent. Also, pronunciation. The way they pronounce their words, the way the native speakers pronounce their words may be slightly different from the way non-native English speakers pronounce the same words. So you want to actually do a lot of podcasts. Do a lot of podcasts, do a lot of 
there are movies, films, um, there are news and all documentaries, anything that is strictly the native speaker's content. Do a lot of it. You get used to their pronunciation as well as their enunciation, how they manipulate their words. You, you would hear some words, you notice that there are some form of modulation, rising and falling of the tone when they are speaking. So you want to actually get used to these, because that's what will help you to know the real word that is being pronounced. Because when you are doing your listening, correct spellings actually matter a lot. So you want to get the right word so you spell correctly. If a word is not clear to you, it is possible that your spellings may go wrong. Right? So these are major factors you want to actually manage during your listening test. We we'll go further. Let's proceed to the next stage. In listening test, we have what we call the important keys. Okay, so right here on the board, we have the important keys that you are advised very strongly to apply when you are taking on your listening test. So these important keys is what we call the three T's. The three T's right here means or represents trick, which is also called the bracket trick. Then we have tips. And also we have techniques. The trick is what we shall begin with. So to begin, for you to apply this trick, you must understand that you need to actually work strictly in accordance to the instruction. So right here, the instruction says no more than one word and or a number. No more than one word and or a number. Please, can you try to interpret that? No, I can see it, sir. Okay. Okay. In my understanding, uh, making a sentence that will not be more than one word. Possibly you can use a number or you can use a word. A sentence in in IELTS listening test, you don't make sentence as answers. It could what you are to write, the number of words you have to write as answer is usually written at every section. So it is important to read instruction before you begin. Now Right here, it's quite crystal clear. What you are required to do is written. This is how your answer should come. Here it says no more than one word and or a number. 
no more than one word and or a number. What it simply means is your answer to any question, any question that falls under this category, under this section, your answer can be just one word answer. It can be one word and a number. It can be just a number without a word. That's what this instruction means. Okay. Now, if you have understood this instruction, What you are supposed to watch very carefully when writing your answer is do not write more than two words. Sorry, do not write more than one word. That's what this instruction is emphasizing on. No more than one word. So do not write more than one word. So your answer falls within one word and one number. It also accommodates one word and a number together. So let's try to understand how to apply this trick. It is a trick that works. It is a trick that keeps you safe. It is a trick that helps you to make your answer an option, to make a part of your answer optional to the examiner when marking your answer. So let's see how we can apply this. The application of the bracket trick works and englobe with this instruction, and we have translated or interpreted the instruction. So, in what scenarios do you then apply this category of instruction when you're writing your answers? Now, it falls under the word when you are writing answers that will come in words. When you're writing answers that will come in words. And how does that work? If you get to hear something that says um, the, the particular creature that produces honey is called the bees. The particular creature that produces honey is called the bees. So, and I ask you a question. Dash produces, or uh, dash produce honey. Dash produce honey. What? Produce honey. Pardon? B. B. B produce honey. Mrs. Janet, what produces honey? B produces honey. B produces honey. So when you write B produce honey. This answer is actually incorrect. The answer is incorrect. Why is it incorrect? One, there are two reasons. Pardon? What is the question? The same question I asked you. What produce honey? Bees. Okay. So if you write B produce honey, it's incorrect. Why? Because grammatically, yes. this is incorrect. Okay. Then, secondly, you need to apply the bracket trick to place it. So grammatically, why is this incorrect? Because this word here, this verb here, 
is in the plural form. Hmm? When you are looking at the subject here, look at it. B is singular. If you are to align this singular to this verb here, it's supposed to be B produces. But because it is produced, so you are saying bees. So how do you then apply the bees in a way that you still be safe? You put your bracket and put the S. Do you understand this? Okay. So right there you have bees produce honey. Bees produce honey. No, you said B. I was right here. I didn't hear B's. Okay, so what we have right there on the board is when you write your B, it is nice to put, to put the plural form in bracket just to play safe in case the examiner wants the plural form of the word if they want the plural form of the word and you have the s in bracket you are safe and it should be acknowledged and marked correct but if you if they don't want the plural form and the s is in bracket examiner would simply ignore it because it is in bracket and they mark you for it. So the bracket trick makes anything you write in it, the bracket makes anything you write in it to be optional. But please do not put your main answer in bracket. Don't put your main answer in bracket. Try as much as possible to leave your answer open. Please, do you understand this? Yes, sir. Is Janet, do you understand me? Yes, but there's a picture where, where I'm not sure. Where I'm not sure of what? I didn't get you, please. Hello, Mrs. Janet. Sorry, I didn't get you. I said, yes, that's, you're right. I, I got you right. But what I'm saying is, I'm not even sure of the first answer. So, definitely, you don't scramble. If you are not sure of your answer, <laughs> you don't even know what the answer is. Then you don't know what to apply in bracket. Yeah. If you don't know what the answer you're is. Not sure between the two, between the two, you're not even sure which one is correct. And that is where the problem is. You need to you need to ascertain the major or primary answer. That's when you are able to correctly apply the bracket tree. You don't put your primary answer in bracket. If you do that, you do not have any answer for the examiner to mark. So you need to have a major, a primary answer that the examiner should consider. Then you, you, if you have an alternative or an optional answer that can also go with the primary, but you're not sure if it should be there, then you put it in brackets. But before you apply such words, before you bring in two words and put one in bracket, you must ensure that the instruction accommodates two words if the instruction does not accommodate, if the instruction does not accommodate two words, and you write two words and put one in bracket, automatically your answer is wrong. There's nothing to consider in the first place. Okay. So right here, this instruction accommodates only one word. 
So you, you, you can't write you can't write two words and put one in brackets, hoping that the bracket will make one invisible. No. The bracket does not make any word invisible. Every word counts. So you must, you, yes, you need to adhere strictly to the instruction. Thank you, sir. All right, so this is how your answer should come. Bees produce honey. Now, if you look at this word, bees, there is provision for singular B and there is provision for plural bees, right? So, in this point, at this point, if what the examiner wants is B, the S in brackets will be ignored. If what they want is B's, the S in brackets will be acknowledged and everything is safe. So, this is how to apply the bracket trick when you are treating a section that says no more than one word and or a number. We'll go further. Now, you might also be treating a section that says that is talking about um, date of birth. For date of birth, you may have some formats to be DD, MM, and Y, Y, Y. Other formats can also be MM, DD, and Y, Y, Y. Okay. So when this, when you are treating a section that says no more than one word and a, and, or a number, and the section you are working on at that point in time happens to require date of birth, maybe someone phoned in and is asking to know about certain things or is, at, or is reporting a situation or making a complaint and the person's information maybe, maybe is required to be written down and the person is asked to provide his or her date of birth, then the person says, I was born on, on September the 6th. September the 6th. Now, if this is what the person said, Mrs. Janet, can we, or is this answer correct based on what the person has given? I was born on September the 6th. Is this correct? Okay, sir. Is this correct? Would you write this? Yeah. I, I won't write because I was thinking that if if it's must go this way. It's not September sixth. September sixth. But since there is day there. Six, uh, September sixth. Okay. So if I write September sixth, is this correct? Yes, sir. September 6th. Is this correct? Yes, sir. Is it Janet? Is this correct? I'm trying to zoom the. I, I just. No, September. The way you wrote it is correct. All you need is the, the TH. The way I wrote what? I, I just wrote this and I, I asked, I'm asking, I'm seeking your opinion if it is correct written that way. It is correct written uh, September the 6th. It is also correct written the way you, you did it up. Please, which one do you, th are you taking? Is it... September September the 6th. The 6th. Okay, September the 6th. So I'm um, to add TH yeah. to the 6th. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now at this point, 
This answer is wrong. This answer is also incorrect. Mrs. Janet, what do you think? Now, let's understand something. I'm in a state, I'm in a state of confusion. All right, well, don't worry. Nobody is confused. <laughs> now, why is this incorrect? Because instruction says no more than one word than the number. I have one, two. So there are two words here. Sorry, I disconnected. So these two words automatically is against, has gone beyond what the instruction says. So, and if you write 09 slash 06, which indicates September 6, is incorrect because here says a number. The instruction right here says a number, and we have two numbers so it's also incorrect so how do you manage it you want to write one word and your six now is this correct yes sir sir yes yeah, it's correct it's correct this is janet is this correct why then is there a big data? I wouldn't know. I'm just asking if it's correct. Mrs. Janet, is that correct? I'm sorry, I'm just back. Pardon? September 6th. No, we, we need um, we need CH. Okay, no more than mm. one word and a number. Be a word. Is it a word? No, it's not a word. No more. It's just a suffix. No more than one word. TH is not a, TH is not a word. It's a suffix. It's just a suffix. So, you say I should put TH here, right? It's a, a suffix. It's a suffix. Yes, sir. So, so, is it correct now? Mrs. Janet, is it correct now? No, it's not correct. The September should be full. No, sir, the September should be full. Okay, so I'm supposed to write September 6 and then T. Okay, now. If you write this, it's going to be wrong. Because what you have written is not even an English word mm -hmm. to begin with. That's French. It means seven. So you have written seven sixth. Right? So it's going to be wrong. So right here, September sixth. If you write it, you stand 95% chances of being wrong as well. If you write September 6th, because the, the lady said, I was born on this on September the 6th. September the 6th. So, what do you need to do? Bracket trick. Put your TH in brackets just to stay safe oh, wow. do we understand but if you bracket it but if you bracket it you're you're good to go yes just in case they don't need a th you leave it in bracket optional yes it, it makes it optional right so that's the way to go and also stay safe, right? So this is how to write it. Sometimes it could be 10th of September, 10th of September. 
So what you do is, you write your 10, put TH in bracket, then write September. Don't write all. Because if you write all September, you are creating two words. Do you understand? Yeah. So you write your 10 in digits, in figure, then put your TH in bracket, then write your September. Every word you have to write in IELTS has to be written in full. Do not abbreviate any word or any answer. Okay? All right. So let's look at another category or scenario. This would be when you are treating money. When you are treating money, there are usually three popular currencies. Okay, these are the three popular currencies you would come across when you are treating IELTS in most cases. If the question is talking about money. This first symbol is called, it represents what? Dollar. Dollar. This second represents what? Pounds, and this represents what? Euro. Euro. Okay. When you are treating a question in IELTS listening tests, and you are required to indicate or write the amount of money that the audio is giving you, please note that the question should be carefully observed. You need to observe if that question has anything dollars written in it. The question. If the question has anything dollar or dollars written, either in word or in a figure symbol form. Okay? Now, if there is dollar, whether word or in symbol form, you do not need to write dollar as part of your answer. Don't write it on your answer sheet. If not, it will make that your answer incorrect. You understand? Let's say for instance, your question says, Okay, right here, if the question comes this way, transport fare, and you see something like this, and you see, maybe you no know, one comes here, that one means question one. Hmm? So you're writing your answer, whatever you hear has, should be written as question one. Then, Transport fare, dollar symbol, and you hear something like $75.15. $75.15. How do we write $75.15? Can you direct? You, you are going to write the 17, since there's already a dollar sign fine. of the dollar, you don't need to repeat it. You just write the 17. What's the heading? Not more than one word. Yes. We're still using no more than one word. Yes. 
Yes. Is this correct? Is this correct? No. Yes, it's fine. Ms. Janet, it's not it's correct. Not because it's no, no more than one word and a number. Okay. So what's it's wrong? Like more than one number. Okay, this is more than one number. Okay, now let's also confirm this. How many numbers do we, do we have here? Mrs. Janet? Okay, it's correct. No, it does, this is not the answer to my question. How many numbers do we have right there on the board? Ten zeros. Eleven. We have how many numbers? Eleven numbers, right? Mrs. Janet, do we have eleven numbers on the board? It's one number. It gives one meaning. But if you want me to count it, it's eleven. It gives one meaning. It's ten. I'm not asking about meaning. I'm asking about how many numbers do we have right here? It's 11. It's 11. 11 numbers. Fine. 11 to one number. Pardon? You're confusing me. Am I confusing you? Eleven words, eleven numbers. Mm. Mm. It's one number. It's one number. <laughs> I think you need to maintain one lane when you are driving. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no for 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 one to rephrase whatever he's trying to do. Okay, so please give me your final answer. How many numbers do we have on the board? One number. Sir, how many numbers? Eleven. Eleven numbers. Okay. So, right here on the board, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have eleven digits, but one number. Yes, that's what I said. Fico. Yeah, use Fico. So we have 11 digits, but one number. This simply represents 10 billion, which is just one number. Do you understand? Yeah, right. Just the way we have one as one number, representing one number. Just the way we have eight, representing one number. 20, representing one number. But just that 20 has two digits. So same thing. Applies right here. So let's go back to this money. How much do we have here, and how many numbers do we have there? Is that how is what I wrote on the board correct? I mentioned um, seventy-five dollars fifty. Seventy-five dollars fifty. Is that correct? Fifty, not fifteen. Sorry, seventy-five dollars um, fifteen. $75.15, is it correct? Yes. Okay, it's not correct? It's not correct. Please, can you share the correct thing? It's supposed to be, you know, this is, this is one, I mean, one, one figure. 75 is one figure or two digits. 15 is one figure or two digits. So, not more than one word or one number. So. This is not correct. So we have more than one number there, there. right? Yes, sir. So and it's going against instruction. Mrs. Janet, is that correct as seventy-five dollars fifteen? Yes. 
It's correct. Okay. So let's see. Let's confirm. When you check your account balance, okay. when you check your account balance, do you usually have these two dots before the cover? Yes, I have. Two dots. Mrs. Janet, when you check your account balance, do you usually have two dots? You're not sure. You're thinking. So in this context, in this context, how do we apply this? Seventy-five dollars fifteen simply okay. can be written as seventy-five dollars fifteen. Just a dot. You don't bring in colon. Okay. Is what no, we no, have. No, 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 no. If we are to bring in colon, right? If we are to bring in colon right here, maybe. Pardon? It's not for IELTS. This is a real life practice. Yes. Check your account balance. You can't have colon. You can only have a dot. So let's say we have 1,525 1, naira, 15 kobo. This is how it appears on your account. So when you're writing in IELTS, when you are to write money, please do not use colon, just use your dot. dot. Do we understand? I understand, sir. Is it Janet, do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, so now, I said you have to check your question paper. That particular part of the question that requires you to write amount. If it has something like this, this is the dollar symbol. When you're writing your answer, when the audio says the answer, are you hearing it? When you're writing it, this is the only thing you are meant to write. For instance, $75.15. You're not meant to write on your answer sheet and include dollar symbol. Don't do this. This will make your answer incorrect. What, why is it so? Okay, this is sorry. because the question already has the dollar symbol. Okay. So you are meant to provide information that is not on the question paper. So this is not on the question paper. So it's assumed that you want to fill in the space. So if you write it again, it simply means you are repeating another symbol. Please, you understand? Yeah, I understand. So that would be what we call tautology repetition. So when you're writing anything, especially listening and reading tests, do not include a part or any information that is already written on your question paper. As a test taker, your duty is to provide the information that you cannot find on the question paper. Now, there are some other questions that would come and within the sentence, it would write dollar in words. Dollar will be written in word. That is after the dash. Maybe after the dash. So when dollar is written this way, there won't be the symbol version. So if there is no symbol version and you have dollars, when you're writing your answer, please do not write the dollar symbol. Don't do this. Just write only this. Do not write this dollar symbol. Because dollars is already written on your question paper. Please, do you understand? Yes, sir. Mrs. Janet, do you understand? Yes, sir. Please, those uh, viewing uh, via the YouTube platform, kindly click on the like button and please do well to subscribe if you've not. Thank you. If you have any question, please drop on the question comments, uh, uh, the comment section of the YouTube of this video, please. Thank you. So, this is way this is the way to go you only write the figure if the symbol the correct symbol is written or if the word or the word version of the currency is spelled that's you don't write it anymore you only write the amount that the audio will say the only time you can write the currency symbol on your answer sheet and it to be correct is when there is nothing such as 
the currency symbol or nothing showing dollar spelled. Then the audio will mention the currency. That is where you can write it on your answer sheet. And when you write it this way, for instance, please remember the bracket trick. Please, is this clear to us? Is it Janet? Is it clear? Yes, sir. That's the only time you can bring in the currency symbol. When it is not written on your question paper, whether in the symbol form or in the spelled version, you can then write it on your answer, but please remember to put it in bracket. Okay. Now let's proceed. If you are treating a question that talks about, um, if you are treating a question that has to do with time, time, let's see how much time, how much we are familiar with time. If you are treating a question that says time, and you have something like this, So which will you go for? Which format will you go for? This or that? As in, will you go for this format that has colon? Or will you go for this format that has dot? The one that has colon. Colon. Okay. Um, Mrs. Janet, which will you go for? The time that has the colon or the time that has just a dot? Hold on. All right. Now, um, you are correct, but it is not what we need. This is what you need. And that's what you should write when you are treating time. Are you saying everything about IELTS? <laughs> it's not different. It's just that. I, I want to post that. You Henry see, is correct. You are right. You know. We're, we're British. You know, we, we practice. Right. We, are, we are colonized by the, by the British and not America. It is the American format that goes with Colon. Right. Okay. It is. When you when you buy the gadgets, you notice that the format of that gadget is on American uh, templates by default. Yeah. So they they bully a lot of other places to make sure you apply their own policies. All right. So right here, this is what you have to do because you are taking on a British exam, and this is a British format. All right. So now let me also ask. Between 9.20 and 09.20, what do you think is the difference? Is there any difference between the two? Is there any difference between the two? Yes. What is the difference, please? Zero point nine could be AM. Zero point nine could be AM. <laughs> yes, you are. I think you are correct. I don't know what I'm meant to say. <laughs> zero. <laughs> the zero point nine could be AM. No, then nine point two O could be PM. 
<laughs> IELTS. Okay, so Mrs. Janet, please tell us which version is actually, or what do you think is the difference between the two? What do you think is the difference between 9.20 and 02.20? Which one now? Which one is AM? I'm going to say my own one. AM is 09. AM is 09. How about we are, going, we are going back to the question, the tree? No more than one word or number. No? Yes. 9.20 is AM, is that correct? Okay, it's 09.20, that's AM. Yes. Then 9.20 9 is PM. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. My question was, what is the difference between this and that? The difference is very simple. This guy is referring to 12 hours template. This guy is referring to 24 hours template. That is the difference. Mrs. Janet, have you seen the difference? Now, when you have noticed the difference, now it is time to ask you a second question. The second question is, what time of the day is this? And what time of the day is this? Mrs. Janet, let's say ladies first. Okay. The first one is Please, what time of the day is 9.20? And what time of the day is 09.20? I said, okay, both of them are representing AM. No, no. This, the, the, the one down is AM. The one up is PM. Okay. So what do you think? The both is, the both is AM. Both of them, AM. Okay. Why Mrs. Janet said this is AM and this is PM. So, Madam, uh, Madam Janet, how is this PM? What is indicating to you that it is PM? In a twelve, in a twelve hours uh, digit. Mm -hmm. How do you write nine a.m.? How I write nine a.m.? I can write nine a.m. by this. Mm -hmm. Zero. It's the same thing, 9.20 a.m. Okay, so here it says 9.20. Is there a.m. here? There's no a.m., but because the 12 hours o'clock, as you've written here. Okay. Noted. Alright, noted. Noted. It still is the 24 hours that has. Noted. 21. So now here. Because 909 has the tendency to go over to PM. Okay, uh, here, right? Uh, 12, 15, here. 15 years. Oh, yeah. Okay, for this guy, what is the. Um, the truth what is, is the point that makes it AM for you, Mrs. Janet? Okay, for um, PM, it's going to be 21 o'clock. 
All right, that's correct. So this one is very correct. Yes, your reason is very correct. But for this one, that's not correct. Because 12, 9.20 a.m., if it is evening, you still get 9.20. But the difference will now be, there will be 9.20 a.m. and there can also be 9.20 a.m. and p.m. Do you understand? Okay, so. You said what, Mrs. Janet? I want You said you go. I want this same question. Ah, okay. I didn't hear it. Okay, so as it stands now, this particular one. I said, I said 9.20 could be morning and evening in 12 hours. Could be AM, could be PM. Ah, we didn't hear when you, we didn't hear when you said that. We we're only hearing AM. Okay, so, nine... I said it. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, sir, you were trying to ask a question? Yeah, my question is that. So, how do we. Is it the two now? Are they AM or PM? Which? What I said before was that. Okay, you said they are both AM. Yes. This is AM. Correct. Okay. But this is not AM, this is not PM. But it can be AM, it can be PM. Okay. The only way we will know the time of the day is when this AM and PM are indicated. Okay. When, they, when it comes this way, you know that automatically it is AM. When it has PM, you know that automatically it is PM. Do you understand? Yes, but when it appears this way, you can't, uh, you can't say for sure that it is AM. That's why I was okay. telling her it's fine. Okay, so now when you are taking on your listening test and you hear on, on your question paper, it is possible that your question that requires time may have schedule. Now, when you have morning and afternoon, maybe um, transport schedule for the day, then you have morning and you have afternoon. Then for the morning section, if you are given the time, maybe you hear something like, to meet up with the first train that departs in the morning, you are advised to arrive at exactly 7 o'clock as the train departs exactly at 7.15. So this would give you ample time to do all the protocols and enrollments. Now, at this point, at this point, you do not need to write AM anymore because the schedule is given to you as morning. The template is there. The template is there. So what you need to write is, if the question says, what time does the train depart? Mm. So what time will you say? 7.15. 7.15. So you, you are meant to simply write 7.15 as your answer. You don't need to write 7.15 a.m. If you do this, this a.m. will make your answer okay. incorrect. This is Janet, do you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let's assume you have gotten that one. Now, towards the afternoon, it is possible also that the audio might say to join if you intend to travel from Maitama down to Guagualada during the peak hours, you are meant to pay 4,500. 4,500. But to meet up with the departure time, please arrive, be at the train station at exactly 7.30 because peak hours are usually 
experiencing a lot of rush and you need a lot of time to clear your tickets. The train leaves at exactly four in the afternoon. Now, to write four in the afternoon, do you need to put PM? You don't need to put PM because right there on the board, it is written as afternoon. Right there on your question paper, it is indicated, the time of day is already indicated to be afternoon. So you don't need to write 4 p.m. anymore. Doing that, your answer will become incorrect. So the only situation where you can indicate the time of the day by adding either a.m. or p.m. is when there is nothing showing the time of the day or when there is nothing indicating a.m. or p.m. on the question. That's where you can hear the, um, the time and put your AM or PM. Remember to leave it in bracket. Mrs. Janet, do you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's it about the bracket trick. Please, please use the bracket trick. It will place you safe. It will place you safe. If you write an answer that you are not 100 sure of. Sorry, it may be very incorrect. But when you write an answer and you leave a part of it in brackets, it will help you to stay safe. Right? So it makes that additional to be optional to the examiner. In the case that if it is required, fine. If it's not required, then that's it. Right? So let's proceed to the next category of instruction. If an instruction says no more than two words and or a number. No more than two words and or a number. What does this mean? How do we interpret this instruction? If a question says no more than two words and or a number, how do we interpret the instruction? So how can you interpret this? Sorry. No more than two words and or a number. Okay, two words uh, or two words and a number or uh, a number. The answer can be two words and a number. The answer can be a number. Yes. Okay. Mrs. Janet, please interpret that instruction. If an instruction says no more than two words and or a number, how can you interpret it? Because it is very key for your answers to be correct under that section. Pardon? Two words and a number. So your answer can be two words and a number, right? Yes, sir. Now, look at it this way. When the instruction says no more than two words and a number, please do not make the mistake of writing two words of two and a number. Two words and a number. Two words and a number. 70% of those answers should be incorrect. So when you have this instruction, what it means is your answer can be one word. Your answer can be one word and a number. Your answer can be in two words. Your answer can be in two words and a number. And your answer can also be just a number without a word. This is what the instruction means. So, there are questions under no more than two words and a number. There are questions that you will be perfect to write just one word answer. Okay? So, you need to be careful so you don't make mistakes of writing two words because you just saw two words, two words. Huh? So, how then do you apply the bracket trick when you are treating a section that says no more than two words and or a number? Let's look at it this way. You've just heard transport fare. Okay, you just heard transport fare. Transport fare is a two word answer, perfect. But it doesn't mean that 100% you need the two words. 
You need to identify the keyword between the two. The one that can do without the other. So, in this case, transport can go away if you don't want it. Fair simply means transport. Do you understand this? So, you put your transport in bracket. And leave the fair open. Now, leaving the fair open passes the message to the examiner that fair is my major answer. Transport is an option. If you need it, please take it. If you don't need it, ignore it because it is in bracket. But if you write transport and fair without the bracket, of course, it still conforms with the instruction two words, right? But if what the IELTS examiners need is just fair and you know transport fair, you are incorrect. Please, do you understand? Mrs. Janet, do you understand? Good. So transport fare is two words. So you do you cannot put transport fare as one number. It's not possible. So if it says one word, there's no way these two can even come in, in the first place because automatically your answer will be incorrect. So you have to go for just the fare. Okay. Can even add another example? Take for example listening test. You can listening. put it listening test. You can put it listening in bracket for what it means that you're writing the text. Yes, but it's very specific to the listening. <laughs> Test can be general. Test can be general. But it's very specific. Because IELTS, for instance, has four periods. Oh my God. So, you have to be careful. They won't give you such questions. Oh, okay, okay. Right? But you just end up shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, so this is one example of a two-word answer. Another example might be... Hungry lion. Hungry lion could be a two-word answer. Now, out of the two words there, hungry and lion, which do you think is the main answer? Lion. Lion? It depends on the answer, the question, Sha. I think the hungry is the hungry is the <laughs> okay, so let's understand how this thing goes. <laughs> when you have these two word answers, yes, the uh, the two females actually gave me the correct answers. Huh? Mrs. Janet and Madam behind you. Here, hungry lion. You need to look at the question quite all right. Yes. Right? But in this case, lion, um, hungry and lion. Hungry right here is an adjective describing describing the lion. Then lion is a noun, the name of an animal, right? So this hungry is just a supporting word. It's describing it. It's not actually the main idea right here. So you can choose to leave this hungry in bracket and leave the lion open. That's how you apply the bracket trick. Okay? In such question, it be, the noun is usually the answer. Yes, in most cases. Except in the question, mm. in most cases. In most cases. Okay, so this is how to apply the bracket trick around two, around no more than two words and or a number. Okay? So let's go to the last category of instruction that you come across when you are treating your listening test. That would be... No more than three words and or a number. No more than three words and or a number. How can we interpret this? Mrs. Janet, can you interpret this instruction? No more than three words and or a number. What does it mean? It means your answer should be in three words and a number. Is that correct? You agree with me, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you agree with, with them? 
When you say no more than three words, mm. could the words be lesser than three? Could be less than three and the number? Could be three or just the number? It just says no more. No more than three words and or a number. So the emphasis is don't exceed three words. That's the emphasis. So it could be two, it could be one, it could be just it's a three words. Well. Three words. The emphasis is do not exceed three words. But the three interpretation, words. the interpretation of this is that your answer can be one word. Your answer can be one word and a number. Yes. It can be two words. It can be two words and a number. I it know. can be three words. It can be three words and a number. It could also be just a number without a word. Please, instruction is very important in IELTS. This is one of the major reasons people feel IELTS. They actually get to hear answers, but the add words are not supposed to come in to hit. They will see the need to intensify their practice. All right, so let's come back here. So if the instruction says no more than three words and or a number, this is what it means. So please do not make the mistake of writing three words, three words, three words all through. 70% of those answers will be incorrect. Some answers may require only two words. Some will require only one word. Okay? So let's now learn how to write three words and apply the bracket trick and, and still remain safe. Okay? So when you hear something like um, brilliant rough rider Brilliant rough rider. Now, when you have, when you list, when you are taking on your listening test, and he's talking about riding or riders, maybe people who engage in lots of different crazy and um, risky, dangerous riding activities, and then there is a particular one that survived the accident that so many others could not. And he was thought to be the brilliant rough rider. So in this situation, it is possible that the three words may be required. It is also possible that only two words may be required. It is as well possible that just a word may be needed. So what do you do? You want to identify what each of these words represent. Now, Brilliant is an adjective, right? Rough could also be an adjective, right? A rider, who is a rider? Is also a noun, right? A number of uh, maybe some form of uh, action or activity or professional career or something. So, we're leaving it as a noun. So, in this case, brilliance is just an attribute. Mm -hmm. To who? Rider. Rough okay. is also a quality or attribute. To who? Rider. The rider. So, they are both supporting words. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So, what you need to do is put this guy in bracket, put this guy in bracket, leave the rider open. Right? So, but do not put two words in one bracket. Automatically, you have annulled those words. Don't put two words in one bracket. But you can put two words in separate brackets and they will be valid. Mrs. Janet, are you following? Okay, so why do we bring in the bracket trick at this point? Just to play safe. You need to play safe because 
one thing that fails a lot of people is slight things just very slight information that we are supposed to add or things that we should not even bring in at all and you bring them in just because of that examiners will mark you down so you just have to pay key attention to some of the things you should avoid and how to place them or make them stay safe for you in a way that if they are needed then examiners would acknowledge them if they don't need them of course they'll be ignored and then the correct thing there will be marked so that's what we have to actually look at okay so this this is how to go about working on the instructions please do not take instructions for granted and do not assume that the same instruction that applies at the section a is what would apply for section b it doesn't work that way every section will come with its own instruction so please read and interpret correctly and then make use of them so that's how to apply, that's how to go with the tricks. Now let's go straight to the second part, which is tips. Let's look at the tips in listening test. Please, you're going to write very quickly. Take down these tips. Tip number one, during your listening test, tip number one is Read the instruction before starting any section. Tip number one. Read the instruction before starting any section. Tip number two. Identify the number of words stipulated in the instruction. Tip number two. Identify the number of words stipulated in the instruction. Tip number three. Read the, the questions before the audio begins to play. Read the questions before the audio begins to play. before the audio begins to play. Tip number four. Write your answers while the audio is playing. Tip number four. Write your answers while the audio is playing. Tip number five, feel free to write up to two potential answers beside the question being treated. Feel free to write up to two potential answers beside the question being treated. But ensure to transfer the most appropriate. Feel free to write up to two potential answers besides the question being treated, but ensure to transfer the most appropriate.
Is that taken? Yes. Next tip, tip number six. Endeavor to transfer all your answers to your answer sheets accurately. Endeavor to transfer all your answers to your answer sheets accurately. Tip number seven. Note that IELTS is also testing your spelling skills. Note that IELTS is also testing your spelling skills. Note that IELTS is also testing your spelling skills. Therefore, always write all your answers in full. And correctly. Therefore, always write all your answers in full and correctly. Tip number eight. Do not push your concentration on the listening test. Do not, do not pause, pause your, concentration. your concentration on the listening test in order to remember an answer missed. Do not pause your concentration on the listening test. in order to remember an answer missed. As this will make you miss even more answers. As this will make you miss even more answers. Tip number nine. Continue with the next question should you miss an answer while the audio is playing. Continue with the next question should you miss an answer while the audio is playing. Continue with the next question. Should you miss an answer while the audio is playing? Tip number 10. If your punctuation skills and knowledge are not good enough. If your punctuation skills and knowledge are not good enough, if your punctuation skills and knowledge aren't good enough, then write all your answers in block letters. If your punctuation skills and knowledge aren't good enough, then write all your answers in block letters. Okay, so these are key tips that you need to hold on to. During your listening test. These are key tips you need to hold on to. Let me give you 60 seconds. Please go through these tips. Let's talk about anyone that you are not very clear about. Okay. In 60 seconds, please. Okay. You wanna... 
that uh, number eight, do not pause your concentration on the missing question, as this will make you miss even more. Yes. What What can one do to remedy this situation? You just situation? guess at the end of that particular section. Uh, you yes. look through the question. And guess. For some guess. Then don't pause your concentration while the audio is still playing. Because the audio keeps playing, it doesn't wait for anyone. And it's not played twice, it's not repeated. So it's a flowing stream. When it flows past you, it's gone. it's gone. Right? So what you need to do is move on. I think the next tip says continue with the next question. Move on. Then at the end of that particular section, you can then pray for the grace to remember that you guess. You might guess and guess right. Yes, please. Number two. Identify the number of words deleted in the instruction. What yes. is the number of words? What do you mean? All right. Here it says one word or two words okay. or three words. The number of words deleted in the instruction. instruction. So if it, if instruction says two words, some persons may be carried away, they will forget. So this instruction, this team is telling you you can write it boldly somewhere on that section. Are we allowed to write on question Yes. On question paper? You have paid for it. By default, you're supposed to get a copy when you're going, right? But it's not released. So use your pencil and do what you need to do to help you ace your test in one city on that question paper. Okay. Do you understand? There is no extra mark for it's question paper return. You don't get any mark. <laughs> so you have to use it to do to perform well in your test. Mm -hmm. Right? So any other parts of the tips that you're not clear about? All right, so it's all clear. So let's go to the last T here, which we call techniques. Okay, so let's begin. In listening test, you are going to experience a high level of paraphrase and it is the basic reason a lot of test takers during the listening test tend to be lost lost during the exercise they don't at some point they don't even understand where the audio is treating during the listening exercise it is because of paraphrase because the audio does not read the question on your question paper using the same words that you have read. So when you read a question or when you read questions on the question paper, you are hoping to hear the same thing from the audio. The audio never does that. Okay. It's not possible. If audio does that, everybody will pass. They are looking for the smart ones. Those who can read in between lines and decipher what and relate what they are saying to what is written. Right? So, the audio will always use synonyms of those things written there to express those information. So, while you are busy waiting to hear is the particular word there, audio will get back, will walk past that level and say the answer you won't hear and you won't write it. So, you've lost that answer. And then it goes to the next question and you are still waiting to hear the first one. Then it gives two answers. The third one comes and goes. And the next thing you hear is, that is the end of your lesson text. You may now transfer your answers. And you're like, how? Do you understand? Yes. So this, that is the reason. It's not like listening test is difficult. It's because you've not understood the technicalities in the listening text. That was what happened that day. That right? So this is what we are going to do under the techniques. And it is major or it is based on paraphrase. So let's look at how the audio paraphrases the words written on your question paper to figures. Because that's what happens. You would read words on the question paper. You are waiting to hear those words. You, wouldn't, you don't know that the audio has changed the word and expressed it in figure. Right? So let's see, for instance, if what is written on your question paper is half an hour, 
Audio will never say half an hour. Audio will tell you 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Do you understand this? If what is written in your question paper is audio will never say a dollar. Audio may just simply tell you 100 cents. 100 cents is equivalent to a dollar. Mm. So that is why the tip says read the questions before the audio begins to play. The reason is very simple. So you prepare your mind on the possible ways those words can be rephrased. That is also the reason the narrator in your listening test, the narrator will tell you before you get to the question, you have some time to read questions one to five. They'll give you time. The reason for that is so you prepare your mind for what This is why people don't pass this test. So when you are reading the questions, don't read the questions to put the questions in your head. It's not possible. Read the questions and identify the keywords in each question. That's what the audio will change, the keywords. Those are the things the audio would paraphrase. Right? So, words will be paraphrased to figures. Always. You can't run away from it. Figures can be. Figures, of course, will be paraphrased to words. When you have something that says every seven days, of course, it will become, it will be expressed as what? Three. Simply. So don't expect every seven days. It is not possible. Okay? When you see something that has to do with um, every 15 minutes, it is what? Do you understand? So open your mind. This is the way I out goes. It's it's not I out is not testing your English. I out is testing your intelligence. Your intelligence covers English and also covers your exposure. Right? So don't go and start reading um Queen Primer or Brighter Grammar, or you are, you are looking for English textbooks to define nouns. <laughs> Those are not what IELTS is looking for. They are testing your intellectual capacity. Then, let's look at how words or figures are paraphrased to fractions and percentage. So, a quarter can be paraphrased to what? In word again, look at paraphrase a quarter to word again. A quarter. A quarter to be paraphrased to word again. To word again. Yes, please. Not not figures. Any idea? This would simply be one and quarter. Right? One and quarter, is it not one and quarter like this? A quarter, one quarter, is same thing, one in word. You don't need to use brackets here. Mm -hmm. One quarter. One quarter means a quarter. Okay. The only thing I paraphrase yes. is a quarter. I change a to one. One, that's one. So how can we paraphrase that to fraction? How can we paraphrase a quarter or one quarter to fraction? That will give you one over four. So in case you, you read a quarter on your question, maybe just read it, and the audio while reading that part will tell you one out of four, that's that quarter. Do you understand this? It's really a business place. Yes, absolutely. So, Please pay attention. So then, now, sorry, sir. A quarter might be reflecting on the question, so that should be in your head. So you are seeing a quarter in words on your question paper. So prepare your mind that that a quarter may not be read as a quarter by the audio. Mm -hmm. 
one out of four. One out of four. four okay. Of so so was so used. When you hear such things, you just like. No, you don't write it. Okay. What we are learning okay. is how the uh, the audio plays around what is written before saying the answer. Possible ways. The ways audio plays around what is written before saying the answer. So when people hear the answer, they don't know that that's the answer because they are still waiting to hear what is written. So they don't know. Why they are waiting, their mind is that they are still playing, they have not started. Do you understand? So what we are learning now is, if what is written in your question is, a quarter of the budget was used for dash. It was. Yes, a quarter of the budget was earmarked for dash. Audio will now say one out of the four fraction of the money has been earmarked to be used for capital projects. The answer is capital projects. Do you understand? So you are waiting for a quarter and the audio has paraphrased it. So your interest will not be that they've started. Mm -hmm. Whereas the answer is about to be said. Right? So that's just what you want to pay attention to. So how else can we paraphrase 1 over 4 to percentage? 25%. That would give you 25%. Then if you hear something like Half of the entire situation, half of the entire whatever it is, how can half of the entire be paraphrased in fraction? 25%. One over two. One over two. Half. Half. Okay. In fraction. One over two. Some, in some cases, two over four. Right? Yes. Now, in percentage, that would give you what? 50%. Is that correct? Yes. So these are ways the audio will play around what is written in your question. You need to prepare your mind. When you are given time to read, it's not because they just want you to read. It's because they want you to read and prepare your mind for possible paraphrases. Mm -hmm. You know, some people don't understand some of these things. When they are told to read, their mind is, the audio starts first. I will just continue. Mm -hmm. to it. So when the audio starts, and they don't know that the audio has paraphrased the first question, the audio has said the answer, they are still waiting. It's, it's disastrous. And when you realize, when the audio tells you, that is the end of your session one, it, you are so disorganized. Because you know how many answers you missed. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go to the next category. Let's look at how words or figures can be paraphrased to general terminologies. Okay, so let's work on these, or on these rather. Here, we have a list of expressions that you may come across during your listening test. And these expressions will of course, will be expressed in a paraphrased way. So let's see how these words or information or expressions can be rephrased or um, expressed without necessarily using these words. Something that happens every day, Baby. the audio can say what? Baby. Baby. Or every 24 hours, hour, right? Something that happens 
every every week every week every week weekly weekly or every seven days right what about every seven days every um every two weeks by weekly or every fortnight right something happens every month that can be expressed as what monthly monthly or four weeks right Something happens every three months. Every three months. A quarter of a year. A quarter. Mm -hmm. Quarterly. Quarterly. What about something that happens every six months? Half a year. Half a year. By annual. by annually. Every year? Every year. Yearly. Yearly? Or? Every 12 months. <laughs> Yearly or? Annually. 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 I'm still. That's not going to be a Okay, something that happens every two years. Buy in one. Buy in one. Buy in one. I'm not in double M. Double what? M. Yes, please. Correct spelling is matter. That's what must be known. What about something that involved about 20 persons or 20 persons directly? How do you expect that? But that word every two years, is it together? Or the buy is separate? Buy annually? Mm -hmm. Buy annually, one more. What's this rate? 20 persons, how can you express 20 persons? How can you express it? 20 persons. How can we express 20 persons? 20 persons. Okay, that will be. It's called. It's called. Oh, we are not doing math. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we not do good? It's part of individuals. 20 persons. It's a part No, it's not religion. Yeah, I know. I, okay, it's maybe. most of that in the, in the Bible? Yeah. It's core is. um. According to Bible, his score is around 35 years or 30 years. No, it's 20. Still 20? Yeah, three score. Three score okay, three, three, three scores. Okay, three scores. Four scores. Okay, mm. three scores and, and a half. Uh -huh. Those That's kind of things. That's to human uh -huh. being. Uh -huh. That was religion. <laughs> but this is IOP. IOP has nothing to do with your religion. It's none of your business. Yeah. Where, normally, where are normally supposed to be? But in mathematics, too, his score is 20. Yes, his score yeah. is 20. Fine, yeah, that's correct. Okay, almost 25. How can you express that? Almost 25. Almost 25. <laughs> About two dozen. Mm -hmm. About two dozen. In case you see 25 on mm -hmm. your Christian paper, mm -hmm. audio will tell you about two dozen. Mm -hmm. So don't wait to hear 25. About two dozen means about 25. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? 10 years. How can you express 10 years? Okay. Hmm? Okay. A decade. Ten years a decade. 
Oh, I don't know why you remember this one, huh? Uh -huh. Okay, 25 years anniversary. How do you express that? 25 years anniversary. Silver Jubilee. Uh, is it no longer in good? Silver Jubilee. How do you express 50 years anniversary? Golden Jubilee. For about 30 years, how do you express it? 30 years. Three decades. How do we express 100 years? 100 decades? A century. Huh? A century. A century. A century. What about one thousand years? <laughs> okay. So these are possible ways paraphrasing can come in during your listening test. So don't, don't expect to hear things like uh, 1,000 years. And then go to your narrative at 1,000 years. It's not possible. It's not possible. So prepare your mind. Whenever it tells you, Read questions one to this, or read questions six to that, or read questions in that. Please read. They have their reasons. Read. It's very good. All right. So we shall stop at this point today and continue from here tomorrow by God's grace. Okay? Please, do we have any question? All right.